Good morning, and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's online worship service for this Sunday, June 14th, 2020. I'm ruling elder and your lay leader, Zach Cosner. I ask that you now turn your attentions to the announcements found on the back of your bulletin. The bulletin can be found at our website, www.centralprespb.com. Click the publications link at the top of the webpage and scroll down until you find today's date. Uh, the link to the bulletin can also be found underneath uh, this video in both YouTube and Facebook's descriptions of the video. Uh, so now let us turn our attention to the announcements. We will continue with online worship services throughout the month of June. Uh, we will, the session will make a decision on future in-person worship services for the month of July at that time. Uh, please stay connected to the church through our social media channels. Look for username Central Press PB. The Presbytery of Arkansas has canceled both summer youth trips, uh, but the Synod of the Sun is offering an online youth workshop July 13th through the 17th. Registration is free and will include a free t-shirt. The Presbytery is also offering to cover the $100 uh, enrollment cost of Montreat at Home. Uh, that will take place July 20th through the 24th. Both events will take place online is, and are for rising ninth graders to graduating seniors and uh, interested adult uh, uh, leaders. Uh, if you have an interested youth or adult, please contact uh, me through our social media channels. Ferncliff is offering a camp in a box. It provides five days worth of activities that are screen free, encourage outdoor activity, and minimize demands on parents. If you are interested, uh, please head to Ferncliff's website, ferncliff.org. Archives of our online services can be found on Facebook and YouTube. Links to each are uh, on our website, as I said before, centralpresspb.com. Please join me in the call to worship. What shall we return to you, O God, for all your bounty to us? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosened my bonds. I will give you thanksgiving and call on your name in the presence of all people. Let us worship God. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Please join me in the prayer of confession found in your bulletin and then silently. Merciful God, you have shown us the path love takes, submitting to the needs of others, open to everyone, willing to suffer and endure. We confess that we desire a different path, one where our interests are protected, our comfort is preserved, and we decide who merits our attention. Such love does not resemble yours. O oh, suffering servant, forgive our faint efforts to follow you. Pour your love into our hearts that we might learn compassion, practice charity, and cultivate both character and hope. And now silently. Amen. As people born of water and the spirit, we have died to the old life, and a new life has begun. God's grace is poured out upon us day by day. Come to the water and remember your baptism. Be thankful and live as one who has been raised to new life. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Good morning. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. As we gather for worship this morning, again, only via video, I want to extend to you my warmest greetings and hopes that you are all doing well. My prayer is that uh, one day soon, the COVID-19 pandemic will be behind us and we will once again be able to 
<clears throat> meet in person safely and joyfully. Our first reading this morning comes from the 18th chapter of the book of Genesis, beginning with the first verse and proceeding through verse 15. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened to the tent of Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. <clears throat> Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age, and it had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. <coughs> so Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, but, or for she was afraid. But he said, Oh yes, you did laugh. Our second reading this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, beginning with the 35th verse of chapter 9 and proceeding through the 8th verse of chapter 10. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, <coughs> James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. <coughs> These twelve Jesus sent out into the out, out with the following instructions: Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, <clears throat> Proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. <coughs> Open now our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, so that as your word is proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear, that hearing we might believe, and that believing we might live lives of richer and fuller service, glorifying you here on earth as you are glorified in heaven. Amen. Disturb us, Lord, when we are too well pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we have dreamed too little, when we arrive safely because we have sailed too close to the shore. Disturb us, Lord, when with the abundance of things we possess, we have lost our thirst for the waters of life. Having fallen in love with life, we have ceased to dream of eternity. And in our efforts to build a new earth, we have allowed our vision of the new heaven to dim. Disturb us, Lord, to dare more boldly, to venture on wider seas where storms will show your mastery, where losing sight of land we shall find the stars. We ask you to push back the horizons of our hopes and to push into the future in strength, courage, hope, and love. <clears throat> With the words of that prayer, Sir Francis Drake captured the heartfelt emotion of everyone who has ever felt that the church has lost its vision, be it from internal disputes or a despair that gnaws at our souls or an overwhelming sense of weariness, or the fact that we have simply grown complacent and set in our ways. There are times when we cannot deny the fact that the Church of Christ has lost sight of its mission and ministry. At such times, I think we suffer from the same type of nearsightedness as Alice in Alice in Wonderland, where she says, would you tell me please which way I ought to go from here and the Cheshire Cat replies, that depends a good deal on where you want to get to. She in turn replies, well, I don't much care. So the cat says, then it doesn't really matter which way you go. So long as I get somewhere, Alice added after, or as an afterthought. Oh, you're sure to do that, says the cat, if only you walk long enough. We'll end up somewhere. But without a clear understanding of our mission and ministry, we may not end up where God would have us. For without a clear vision of who we are and what Christ calls us to be, the church of Jesus Christ merely flounders. But fortunately for us in this morning's gospel lesson, Matthew gives us insight into the mind of our Lord and his call of the disciples to ministry. The passage we just read offers the church a perfect opportunity to refocus our vision for mission according to the will of our Lord. And I believe that mission can be summed up with one word, compassion. Someone once remarked that compassion is what makes a person feel pain when someone else hurts. It's compassion that has led thousands upon thousands of peaceful protesters to take to the streets in recent weeks, voicing a demand for an end to pointless brutality and racism. It's compassion that drives us to seek the best for our neighbors as well as ourselves. 
And I believe that certainly describes the nature of our Lord. Matthew tells us that Jesus felt compassion for Israel when he saw the crowd. The people that gathered appeared leaderless, like sheep without a shepherd. They looked lost and confused. They were dominated and manipulated by people who sought selfish gain. And Jesus felt compassion for them. His heart ached for them. Is there any wonder then that as this morning's passage opens, it reports that Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. We see in those actions a real passion for reaching people. And such passion for and compassion toward people is important for us to remember. Because not only does Christ continue to reach out to all of humanity in compassion, but also that compassion becomes the very basis of our work as the body of Christ. It is out of his primary mission that the mandate for the disciples develops. Theirs is not the lonely task of spiritual entrepreneurs who blaze their own trail. Rather, they are invited to engage in a mission established and undergirded by Jesus himself. In other words, the manner in which Christ lived his life is the pattern by which we should live our lives. <clears throat> As Christ exhibited a solidarity with all humanity in his ministry, so too is the church that bears his name. And as the Reformed theologian Karl Barth once noted, solidarity with the world means that those who are genuinely pious approach the children of the world as such. That those who are genuinely righteous are not ashamed to sit down with unrighteous friends. Those who are genuinely wise do not hesitate to seem to be fools among fools. And those who are genuinely holy are not too good or irreproachable to go down to hell in a very secular fashion. There can be no doubt about it. As it was for Jesus, so too is compassion to be our mission. And as we read on in this morning's passage, we learn that there is no time like the present to become involved in that ministry. Because as Jesus says, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. What that says is that there are people hurting everywhere we turn. There are people in need of compassion in this community, perhaps even closer than we might think. Mother Teresa once said, the poorest of the poor are those who feel that they are unloved. Let me repeat that. The poorest of the poor are those who feel that they are unloved. And there are far too many people in this world today who feel that way. There is a harvest of people near and far who long to have their lives transformed by compassion. And the image of the harvest which Jesus speaks of, adds to this theme of compassion by introducing a notion of urgency into the metaphor. Because when a crop is ready for harvest, there's no time to waste. Reapers are needed on the spot and without delay. Precisely because the people are harassed and helpless, they need the ministry of compassion. Moreover, it is a mission and ministry that cannot wait for a more opportune time, such as when the church is stronger or richer or more confident. 
harvest time has come and laborers are needed today. Which is why Jesus instructed his disciples not only to ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest, but then sends out the 12 apostles. It becomes clear that they themselves become part of the answer to their own prayers. Jesus enlists them and us today to continue to carry out the mission of compassion that he began. Matthew tells us that as Jesus sent out the disciples, he gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. The disciples were not expected to work wonders on their own, but were empowered with a divine gift so that the inbreaking of the kingdom of God would happen time and again through their ministry. Now, <clears throat> I doubt seriously any of us possess the power to touch lepers or those with cancer and heal them in an instant. We probably cannot shout, be gone at the raging forces afflicting a diseased mind and expect the illness to flee. We are not able to stride into a funeral home and with simply a word, raise the dead from their caskets. And as much as we like, would like, we do not possess the ability to simply wave our hands and erase the stain of four centuries of racism in this land. But we miss the point if we assume that we are supposed to reproduce the mighty deeds that our Lord did, as if the emphasis were on us. The point that we should all remember is that God, who is at work in the world in Jesus, is still at work in the world in the risen Christ. Wherever there is disease or evil or hopelessness or unbelief or death, Jesus Christ, our merciful Savior, is at work proclaiming the gospel of hope, healing people from disease, casting out demonic forces of evil, and defeating the ruthless grip of death. The risen Christ is with us always to the end of the age. So our task is not somehow to replace Jesus, but to join alongside him in the work that he is doing in the world. All the while celebrating the wonderful truth that was expressed in our reading from Genesis, that there is indeed nothing too wonderful for the Lord knowing that the ultimate success of our mission of compassion resides not in our hands, but rather in the hands of God, frees us to focus our time and energy on serving others, which is the whole point of our mission and ministry in the first place. To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. I would ask now at this time that you would please join me and confirm what it is that we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now return to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and offerings, which again this week will be taken electronically by going to the, our webpage, www.centralprespb.com and clicking the Donate Now link found at the upper right-hand corner. You can also mail your offering uh, to the church directly. Our address is 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603. 
It is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, eternal God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. But we are most grateful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. For our Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. And so, O oh God, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves for you to use as you see fit until that most glorious day when at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend and confess him, Lord, to your honor and glory. Amen. At this time, let us share our joys and concerns, which we have uh, multiples of this week. Um, we were asked to pray for uh, Brad Von Tunglin, uh, Thomas Porter, and uh, Kara, Kara Taylor. Um, all three of those people are having medical issues um, or continuing medical issues, and we ask uh, continued prayer uh, for their recovery. Um, we ask uh, for prayer for Jessica Munn, who was um, who is expecting uh, medical test results here in the coming days? We pray that uh, she receives good news. Uh, we have a, pra a praise report. Uh, Bernie Slackey, um, who is um, uh, she celebrated a birthday this past week, and also more importantly, she also uh, we have been told has recovered from the coronavirus. Um, if you're interested in sending her a note. Uh, please contact the, uh, us through social media and we will pass along her um, information if you want to send a card uh, to her um, in the coming days. We also ask for prayer for our nation, uh, which is in a moment of change and upheaval. Um, we pray that those uh, our leaders make wise decisions, um, considering everyone uh, in our great land. Uh, we ask that you uh, at, ask the Lord for comfort and um, care to those who are suffering and uh, wisdom to those who are making decisions uh, throughout um, through our governmental structures. Um, we also ask for prayer um, for, uh, speaking of coronavirus, uh, we are asking for prayer for uh, all of those who are currently um, um, infected with the disease. Uh, we ask for prayer um, and ask for healing for those people. Uh, we ask for protection uh, for those who are on the front lines, our, our medical professionals, our first responders, and our um, employees of businesses who are, who are now open or, or reopening. Um, we pray for protection uh, from the virus for those people. And uh, most importantly, we ask for um, uh, relief and comfort to those who have lost loved ones to this horrible disease uh, in the past few days. We also uh, pray that the uh, spread slows in the coming days. Um, we know we have not gotten good news on that front and we ask for, for uh, that uh, as well. <clears throat> Holy and gracious Father, we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the same today as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. We ask for prayer for those uh, people who are uh, going through medical difficulties uh, that we mentioned. We ask for good news and test results for Jessica. Uh, we ask for um, healing for our nation and wisdom for our leaders. Uh, we ask that those affected by coronavirus uh, be healed. We ask for protection for those who are most at risk from contracting the virus. We ask for the spread to slow and we ask for comfort and healing for those who have lost loved ones. Uh, we also thank you, Lord, for uh, Bernie Slackey's recovery from coronavirus, and we thank you that she has seen another birthday uh, here with us. We thank you for that, O oh Lord. Give us hope as we strive to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit, taking today's message with you, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.